So I spent the day remaking my website on Card, and Card is a simple, free, fully responsive one page site builder for pretty much anything. I've been using it for several years now. I've always wanted to showcase it here on this channel, and I figured since I made a new page today, I'll actually remake it from scratch and make this into somewhat of a tutorial and overview of Card. So today I built this web page for myself. It has a rotating logo in the top left that gives it a unique feel. It has my social links in the top right. And then this detail banner in the center has a moving video background, which I thought gave it a really cool feel. So these assets such as the moving logo, which is a GIF, and then the video background I actually did in Premiere Pro separately. And I won't be showing you how I actually made those in this video, but you don't really need a spinning logo. You can use any image file here. And then if you really wanted a video background as well, you could find a stock video footage or something. Maybe mess with it if you know how to make it how you want to look in your video editor and you'll be able to use a video yourself. So as I scroll down, there's a little about me section with the photo, a little paragraph and then a link. This is a, this sentence is actually a link that will open an email client if it's clicked on. And then to finish it off, there is a little section that links to my blog. It says, I write about the internet and what's happening in technology, which is true if anyone wants to go subscribe to that. Um, just go to my website link in the description. And then this button has a gradient background and when you hover over it, it gets solid. So I thought that was a really cool look as well. And then it has these rounded borders on the sides, which just gives it a little bit more of a section look instead of it being too bland without it and then finally a little arrow at the bottom that scrolls you back to the top when you click on it so this is a pretty simple page i'll probably be adding more to it but for the sake of this video i feel like it's perfect to showcase and give a little tutorial on card so let's go ahead and jump in and start building this um, from scratch and what you're going to want to do is go to card.co c-a-r-r-d.co and you'll probably have to make a little account once you've done so, you can go ahead and choose a starting point. Card has a lot of templates that you can use. A lot of them are very good looking, simple, and for different purposes. I'm going to actually be starting from scratch, so I'll choose a blank canvas and then we'll get started. So if you choose a blank canvas, this is exactly how it's going to look. So it's going to take us a while. This will be one of my longer videos, but I'll have, I'll have it broken up into chapters and sections so that you can navigate to whatever section you're particularly interested in to make it easier for you. Or you could just sit along and follow me as I go. So what I'll go ahead and do is just start from the top. So the only thing it's given me so far is just a little text box. And as I move my mouse, you can see that what I hover over and then click on, it will let me edit specifically. So you can see that when I expand a little, there's a page box. If I click that, this is your overall page settings. Now I'll probably leave this on default until I might need to mess with it later. But this is where you can adjust your overall, maybe width, padding, size, spacing, stuff like that for your overall page. But we'll go ahead and leave this on default for now. And one thing about card is that you can't do side-by-side -side elements unless you use something called a container. For example, there's this text here. If I wanted to add text next to this, for example, on the side, it won't let me do that. I can only put it on top or on bottom. But but the way we can work around this is by using what's called containers. You want to use a container for any different section you have on your page. For example, this section up here is its own container. This banner here is its own container. This section here is its own container. So what you'll start to notice pretty soon is that your website will be made up of a lot of different containers because they give you more control. So let's go ahead and add a container. Right now it's empty, but what you can do here is make it into columns. So now what this has done for me is, now I can have side-by-side -side text, boom. And I, the way I accomplished this was by using a container instead of just having the element on the blank page. So we won't need this text here. I'll go ahead and delete both. And now I have a container with two columns. So if I click on the container and then I come up here to the right, I can add an image, which will go ahead and be my logo image. Now this was the GIF file that I showed you on the page. It has a black background. So in order for this to not be ugly, I'm going to have to make my whole page background 
black so it blends in perfectly. So if I just come out here to the outside area and click, it automatically brings up my background settings. And I'll just want to come down here to the color section and make it black. You could also do a gradient or a video slideshow image for your background. For my purposes, I'm just doing the black color. And now this logo already looks a lot better since it doesn't have its own background. So in the right side of the container is where I'm going to have my social links that I had in the top right. So what we'll do is click on the container, come up here to the plus icon and choose text. So I want to make sure the text is in this empty box. And then over here on the left is where I can actually add my text. So the links I want listed will be Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So the reason you can't see the text is because it's actually black by default. So I'm going gonna, gonna to want to come up here and make this a grayish color. But that's not the only settings I want to change. For one, I don't like the font. So I'm going to change the font to one of my favorites, which is enter. Where did it go? There it is. So step one, change the fonts. I'm going to make the size a little bit smaller. Probably that for now. Maybe make the weight to medium. And then for sure, I'm going to want to change the alignment to right, since this is going to be on the right side and the logo is going to be on the left. <clears throat> so there's a couple things I can already notice here. For one, these aren't aligned in the center. As you can see, these social links are a little higher than my logo, which I definitely don't want. So I'm going to want to actually come to the container, which I can do so by moving my mouse. So you're going to want to make sure that it's container when you click and not page. And when the container is hovered, you can click down and that's what will let us change the settings of the container. So you can change the width of each side, which I don't want to do just yet. I want to come up here to the paintbrush and this is how we change the appearance settings of anything I'm editing. So click that. And there's a lot of settings in here to adjust the look of my overall container. But what I want to scroll down to currently is contents and this will allow us to change the appearance of the specific contents inside our container so by default this setting right here is set to top if i change it to center boom now you can see it's centered everything in this container box and that accomplished that problem for us but i'm starting to realize now that my page is a little bit too skinny i want it to spread out a little more for us so i'll come up here to this and click page scroll back up and I want to adjust my width to probably about 65, just to give it a little bit more spread so it fills up more of the page. Another thing is my logo is a little bit too big. So if we hover over it, click, we'll come over to the logo's appearance settings and adjust the width a little bit. We'll just make it 10 on the dot for now. And now we have um, our header nearly done. For now, we'll go ahead and leave it be. We'll probably come back to it and change some settings after we have more added to our website. So that's our first container. What I'm going to want to do now is create another container. So I'll be able to work on my details section with the moving video background that you saw on the finished website. So this container, we're going to want to actually split into columns as well with two different sides. And then we're going to want to come to appearance settings and scroll down to background. And this is where we can change our container to have a video background. I'll go ahead and upload my background video and it won't appear to be moving until you actually preview your website once it's like published. And if you want to do so, you can publish the website by giving it a title, a description, and you can publish it to one of their URL endings here. We have a few options. Just give it a name and then you'll be able to open it in a new tab and preview it just to make sure the video is how you want it to look. I don't really need to preview it just yet, but just know that this background will be moving in the finished product. And then the only thing left to do in this container is add the text that said digital creator and big text and then smaller text over here that gave a little bit more details. So click the container, come up here and add another text box. And on this side, we're going to want to write a little bit of details. So videography, web design, creative content, and then have a little plus sign for aesthetic purposes. But obviously that's not blending in very well. So I'm going to want to come up here to appearance settings. For the sake of this looking better on the video background, I'm just going to make it pure white. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, make it just regular weight. And then if I scroll down to appearance, I can actually make it all uppercase. And now that I've done so, I noticed that I want to make it even smaller than this. So probably 0.5 and I'll probably keep it at medium weight. 
So what you'll notice when making websites with card or in general when you're designing anything, it's a lot of playing around with things. Just looking at your elements and deciding how you want it to look and tinkering with it as you go. So there's my text on the left. I'll go ahead and add another text box, which will be my large, much larger digital creator text. I'm obviously going to want to change the font. Let me double check what that is. There's my font. I need to make this much bigger. I'll go with 6.125 will probably be good. Click done for now just to take a look at it. And I'm going to want this to be on one line. I don't want it to be two lines. So what I can go ahead and do if I come up here to my container and go to the main container element section, I can actually change the width of each side of my container. So since this text is much bigger, I want to make the right side of my container take up more space than the left. So I'll change the right side percentage to about 70. And that gave the text more room to fill in and just make it on one line, which is definitely what we want. Now this is good. There's a couple more things to change. For example, I want the digital creator text to match my secondary color of the logo, which will be C2A275 color code. There's that. And then the only thing left to do here is give my container some rounded corners, which I can do in the appearance settings. So we'll bump that up to one. That rounded the corners out nicely. And this is looking pretty dang good already. What I want to go ahead and do is give this top container a bottom margin. And you'll see what that means is when I click the container settings, and I come down to the margin section. If I bump up that bottom margin, it basically gives the bottom of the container much more room to breathe before it reaches the next section. You definitely want your containers and your elements to have room. Empty space is definitely important in any sort of design. So one thing I want to do is get this logo to be as far to the left as possible. Right now it looks like it's a little bit too far in the middle. So if I come up here to the container settings and come down here to contents and change this to left instead of auto or center. Now it moved the logo to the left side and it looks a lot better, more evenly spread out. The reason this text didn't change also to the left is because I actually gave it its own alignment settings. So I changed the alignment to the right and that overrides the, the container settings. So if you edit a specific element instead of the overall container settings, the element settings will overwrite any other things that it, that it has under it. For example, if I was to put this on auto, then it would recognize the overall container settings that I changed. But since I made it right on its own, that takes precedent. So this is pretty perfect. I haven't changed this text to links yet, which we can go ahead and do. And the way we can accomplish this, if you read this section down here, it actually supports what's called markdown, which is a way to edit text and change the appearance of text using different symbols. So this is the one we'll be using right here which is showing us that we want to put our link text, what we want to show in brackets. And then right after we'll put parentheses with the actual link where we want the link to go. So let's, so let me show you up here, Instagram. If I put Instagram in brackets and then do an open parentheses and I'll actually type the link out here, which is my Instagram page. And you'll see that when I closed the parentheses in my actual website over here, it changed it to a link. So this is what's called markdown. And I'll do the same with my links over here. So this is what the finished products will look like. We'll have what we want to show in brackets and then the links following it. Make sure there's no spaces in between the bracket and the parentheses. And it should turn your text into links. Now these links look okay, but I don't want them to be underlined. I just want them to be plain text to where when I hover over it is when it'll change colors. So you know it's a link. So if we go to appearance settings for the text, this is where I can scroll down to link style and change that to plain. And it gets rid of those underlines. And then if I come up here to hover, it lets us add a color for our hover. And I want it to be the same color as our secondary elements here. So what I'll do is click this text, copy this using control C on my keyboard, Come back up here and then add that color with control V. And what you'll notice now is when I hover over my links, now they have a really cool hover effect where it just changes colors and looks really smooth. 
And that's perfect. My header is actually done, done with right now. So now we're already about halfway done with our page. I'll move on to the about me section by adding another container. You know the drill. And then what we're gonna wanna do now is make this two columns yet again. These columns will actually go ahead and stay 50-50. And then if I click my container and add image, I'll be able to upload my image here on the left side. You can adjust the crop as well as some color settings and different things here. For me, I'm just gonna wanna make it, you know, generally my top half and leave the bottom out because I won't really be needing it. If your editor on the left side is ever covering what you're trying to see, you can move it to the right side with these little arrows here just to see what you're doing. So my image is obviously pretty small right now. I'm going to want to adjust the width. I'm just gonna wanna set it to max so it fills up its whole column. But once it's max, I wanna go ahead and add rounded corners, change that to one just to match my other description banner element. And this looks pretty nice already. So on my right side, I'm gonna wanna add text, which I can drag over to the right. I'll change this back to the left side. For some reason, it always feels really weird to me on the right side. I only do it if I have to. I think I've just gotten used to it. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste the text that I have written out on my other monitor. Paste it in here just to save myself some time. Now you'll see that it's aligned to the right, which I definitely don't want doesn't read very naturally when that's the case. So I'll come over to alignment, change it to left, and I already have a pretty good about me section. I'll just have to adjust a few more things. For example, you can see that there's a gap on this left side and it's not lined up with the banner above it, which I don't want. So I'll come to container settings, appearance, and the reason this is happening is because of my padding. By default, it gives your containers about two padding vertically and horizontally, which is good depending on your case. But for me, I'm gonna get rid of this horizontal padding. And then one more thing I wanna change is give it more gutters. And what this means is if I drag this, it gives your two columns more space in between. So I'm gonna give this a decent gutter of about eight, just to give it a gap. Like I said, blank space is definitely not a bad thing. It's a good thing in a lot of designs, so make sure you use blank space accordingly. And I'm definitely gonna wanna edit my text a little bit. One thing I like to do is make sure my line spacing is a little bit larger. I'm gonna go ahead and do 1.75. It just gives each line more of a presence, in my opinion. And then the only thing left to do in this section is add another text under it, where I'll go ahead and type, let's start a conversation. Now this text, I'm gonna wanna stand out a little bit more since it's gonna be a link. So I'll come over here to appearance. I'll just make it one little movement to the right larger, and then I'm gonna wanna actually make it white. Maybe not completely white, but white wider than the text above it, so it stands out a little more. And then, like we did earlier with Markdown, we're gonna wanna change this to a link. So that's what I want to show, and then right after, we'll put a link. Now in this case, it will be a little bit of a different link. If I come down here and click this, it shows me the different kinds of links that Markdown supports. And what I'm gonna wanna put is a mail to link, which will make it so that when it's clicked on, it will open the user's email client and it will fill in the to to my email address. So that's what this link will accomplish. So we'll type mail to colon and then my email. And when I close the parentheses, you'll see that it changed it to a link which is exactly what we want. So this looks really good. I'll just give this a little bit of margin so that it has a little bit more room to breathe. And that's my about me section. So you'll see that this container is pretty close to the one above it. There's not a lot of room here. So we can click on either container here. I'll just use this one and I'll come over to the margin section. And since this is the top of the container, we'll give it some margin up top of about five and that will give it about the same amount of room as up here, just to give the website some continuity. Now this is already looking super good. The only section we have left is just the little blog section that had those little round corners on the side to be able to link to my blog. So yet again, we'll add a container with two columns. The column on the left, I'm gonna want to be about 75% of the room and you'll see that it changed that accordingly. So I'll go ahead and add text into that left side. 
And this is where I write a little bit about what I write about. I write about the internet and what's happening in technology. And then over here on the right side, if I add a button element, I'll be able to put the button in the empty box, empty column. Now this button is black, so this is why it's blending in with the background. So we're gonna wanna come up here. I'm gonna change the background to the usual color I've been using, which I don't believe I still have copied. Yeah, because I copied my text, so I'm gonna have to find where I use that color, copy it, come back down here to the button. And now my button background is my secondary color that's used throughout the website, just to give it a little bit more continuity and presence. So this button, I'm going to want to change some appearance settings. For one, I definitely want a gradient. If you don't know what a gradient is, it's basically when two colors blend together. It gives it a really cool look. I'm going to want my gradient to be kind of like an orangish, dark orangish color. And now you'll see that my button has a gradient background, which looks pretty cool. Now this button, if I come up here to the main section of the element settings, I can click it, change the label, which is what it says. I'm just going to want it to say go to blog. And then another cool thing that card allows us to do in appearance settings is come over here where it says label only and it allows us to have a, an icon as well. So I want a label and then an icon to show on the right side. As you can see, it added an icon down here. And if I come over here back to the main page of the settings, I'll be able to actually change what that icon is. And I'm just going to want a right arrow. There's a ton to choose from, as you can see a bunch of different brands, and then just some built-in default ones at the top for navigation purposes. So I'm going to want a right arrow, and there's either a thicker one up here, but I want the light version. Go to blog, and now you can see it has an arrow on the right side. Now the only other thing I'm going to want to change on this button is give it some rounded corners, of course. And I've been using one exactly for all my rounded corners on this site. The only thing I can change now is give it a hover. So the hover, I'm gonna actually make it the same or nearly the same as the actual gradient, darker orange gradient color that I chose. So I'll paste that into this hover color option up here. And now you can see that when I hover, it makes the whole thing that darker color when I hover over it. It just gives it, gives the button a little bit more personality and more pleasure to hover over and click on. So this looks okay. I I believe that these two things are a little bit too spread out and I don't have my rounded border over here on the left and right side. So I'll come back over here, scroll down the border and I'm not going to want my border to be my usual secondary color. If I click done just to take a look, as you can see, it just gives it a squared border. So we're obviously going to want to change this quite a bit. For one, I don't want it on the bottom and the top. So I'll uncheck these boxes so that it's only on the sides, as you can see now. I'm also going to want to give it the rounded corners that I've been giving everything, exactly one. And now I have those rounded borders. But as you can see, it's cutting into my text a little bit. It doesn't have that space that I need. And the reason that's happening is because I don't have any padding over here. So I'll change this to two. We'll see how that looks. Now you see it gave it some horizontal padding on both the left and the right side. I'm going to want it to be even higher, I think. I'll make it three. And that's looking pretty good. I might make it even more. I'll go ahead and do four. And maybe I'll lower my gutters for this container just because I don't really want them to be as spread out on the left and right side. And now this looks pretty dang good. I'm happy with this. The last thing I'll do is copy the color of this gray up here. I'll change this text to that same gray just so it's kind of continuous in my color scheme. So now I basically have my full website. The only other thing I want to add is an icon, which was my bottom arrow down here that will scroll us back to the top. So add an icon, come down here to up arrow, also the light version, and then I'm going to want to make it a little bit bigger. Probably 1.75 will be perfect. I'll go ahead and keep it the gray that I've been using and I'll just change the hover, which I'll need to copy and paste as I have been throughout this whole video because I don't have it marked down anywhere. And now when I hover over the arrow, it has the color. In order to allow us to scroll to the top, I'll need to add a scroll point. Now what the hell is a scroll point? I'm gonna show you. So if I scroll to the top, I'll click this container just to make sure it adds it under it. 
I'm gonna wanna come down here and add a control element. Now what this allows us to do is create a certain scroll point. Now there's a few different options that I won't be going over today, but what we're gonna use it for is a scroll point and it basically allows us to pinpoint where we want something to scroll to when it's clicked. So this scroll point, I'm gonna want at the very top and then I'll just name it home so that when I come down here to my arrow element and change the URL of the arrow when it's clicked, I can just simply put home and card will recognize that I want it to scroll up to my home scroll point that I just created. And I think my website's just about complete. It basically looks identical to the one I already created before. And what we can go ahead and do now is preview it. So I'll come up here to the save publish section. I'll give my site a title, AD demo, a description, AD website for YouTube. I'll publish this to a card.co URL that's built in, AD demo, that's available, and then I can publish. So we'll allow this to do its thing, make sure it published the card, and then afterwards we'll be able to actually preview the online version of this website we just created. So my site was successfully published to addemo.card.co, and here is my finished website. As you can see, the moving video background is working perfectly. My logo is rotating. My links have the correct hover. This is linked correctly. My button has the right hover. Let's make sure our arrow works. This is the true test. Boom, as you can see, it scrolled us right to the top where we want to be. So everything works perfectly. We want to make sure our site looks good on mobile as well. So if you've noticed this button up here, this gives you a mobile view instead of a desktop view of your site editor. And there's definitely some things we're going to want to edit. Now, by default, every container has auto mobile settings, which will look decent in most scenarios. For example, this down here won't need much changing. Most of this won't need a lot of changing, but my header and my detail banner definitely need a little bit of changes. So if we go ahead and click each container, come to appearance, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, this is where we'll be able to adjust our mobile settings. Now by default, it's on auto. That just lets it handle its own thing, its own responsiveness and everything like that. But we're gonna wanna go ahead and change a couple things for ourselves. So click manual. Our layout by default on auto will be stacked. But what we want is actually to change it to default, which will give it the look, the same look that we have on desktop. Depending on what you make yours look like, this might be a possibility. For us, it's perfect because we just have this small logo and small links on the right, and they fit together perfect side by side, even on mobile. So change the layout to be side by side, and that's really the only mobile setting we'll have to change for this container. So we'll click done, and then we'll move on to the next container. Scroll down to mobile, change it to manual. Now this, we probably won't be able to do default, or actually that that's exactly what we can do. That looks pretty nice. The only thing we'll need to change is the actual text. There's too much of a gap in between the top and bottom. So what we can do is click on the text, come over here to appearance. And what we're looking for is line spacing. So I'm gonna make that as low as possible, which is 0 0.75, just so it's got a pretty cool look. Not, not a lot of space in between. Looks a lot better in my opinion. And the only other thing I feel like is this banner is rather small for a mobile screen. And what we can do is go back here to the mobile settings, maybe mess with the padding a little bit. So I'm thinking I'm gonna make the vertical padding all the way up to 12 so that this banner will actually fill up a larger section of my screen only on mobile. So if we, if we go up here to desktop view, this banner will look the same and that's because we're only changing our mobile settings so it only affects the mobile view which is pretty cool so on mobile we'll make this section a lot taller fills up more of the screen and then other than that i believe our website actually looks pretty good on mobile so those were the only things i need to change we can go ahead and publish the site again to overwrite any other settings we had and if we come back here to the preview i'm not on a mobile device obviously you can always go to the link on your phone but i'll go ahead and just make this smaller to kind of simulate what it would look like on a phone. As you can see, this section's a lot taller, looks pretty damn good. Everything else looks pretty good. And I'm really happy with the way this looks on mobile and on desktop. This is a pretty dope homepage. And this is how you can create a modern, unique styled landing page, 
profile, portfolio, just about anything you need can be created on card. And you can even get pretty advanced with it. Now you can't have multiple pages, but you can simulate multiple pages by using sections. But one thing to keep in mind, the reality of just having a one page site, even if you do have different sections, it's not actually a real other page. So everything is loaded behind the scenes when you load a card website. So if you have a hundred different sections, yes, it will simulate like you have a bunch of different pages, but it's actually loading everything on the whole site when you first load it. So you don't want to blow up your card website too much. You don't want to add too much to it in order to keep loading times, you know, fast and speedy. So if you have, if you need a website that needs a bunch of different pages and a bunch of different content, you're probably going to want to use something other than card, or you can do something like I'm doing where I'm linking to my blog, which is hosted on a completely different platform. You can do something along those lines too, but hopefully this video gave you a pretty good understanding of card, what it's all about, how to use most of the functionality. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe. I'm showcasing all kinds of different products and services and tools online. And I'm going to hold myself to do weekly uploads from now on, which I would love if you helped me remain accountable. That'd be awesome. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Bye.